Welcome to episode 181 of EDH Commander Challenge. I'm your host, BT. Today's episode, like all our content, is brought to you by our EDH CC Club, aka the Patron Pledgehammers. Thank you so much, guys, for your kind hearted support. We wouldn't be able to make our weekly content without you. We love you all. Also, if you guys are out there looking for some new playmats or custom sleeves, please check out yourplaymat.com and use our promo code BT10YP or just click the affiliate link in the description below and you'll receive 10% off your order. This will not only get you some sweet swag, but it will also really help out the channel. Now then, let's get into it today and check out those opening hands. First, in this corner, with an opening hand of a forest, fortified village, shielded by faith, heroic intervention, wild growth, battle mastery, Kenrith's transformation, and his Celestia-style general Sithis Harvest's hand, he is the unpredictable Jimmy. Next, in this corner, with an opening hand of a plains, two forests, Guardian Project, Sylvan Library, Uvenwald Hydra, Vidalkan Aurori, and his Celestia style general Hamza, Guardian of Arashim. He is the MTGOG. This is Mark. Jimmy won the dice with the start us off, so let's begin this Celestia bound card fight. For their first turns, Jimmy plays Fortified Village untapped, revealing a forest from his hand, and casts a Turn 1 Wild Growth on said land, while Mark plays a forest. Jimmy plays a Plains, and casts his general, Sithis, Harvest's Hand. while Mark plays a forest and casts a turn to Sylvan Library. Jimmy plays a forest and casts Battle Mastery, enchanting his general, which also triggers her effect, getting him a life and a free card draw. Then he moves into combat and attacks with his general who now has double strike and deals Mark 2 damage before passing. For Mark's turn, he doesn't keep any of his extra cards with his Sylvan Library. He instead plays and sacrifices Verdant Catacombs, paying one life to net Canopy Vista from his deck into play. Then he casts Micaiah the Lunark, and passes. Jimmy plays a forest and casts Sword of the Animus, followed by Reprobation, enchanting Machias, making it into a 2-3 thanks to the counter on it, but it loses all of its abilities. This triggers his general, gaining him a life and a free card draw for passing. During Mark's turn, he keeps one extra card from his Sylvan Library, paying for life. Then he plays the Plains and casts Guardian Project and passes. Jimmy plays a Forest and equips his sword to his general. Then he casts Core Spirit Dancer. Jimmy then moves into combat and attacks with Sithis. With his Sword of the Animus trigger, he gains a basic land from his deck into play tapped. Mark declares no blocks and takes four damage before Jimmy passes. For Mark's turn, he once again keeps one extra card from his Sylvan Library, paying for life. He then plays a forest and casts Juniper Order Ranger. 
This triggers his guardian project, allowing him to draw a free card, and he passes. Jimmy plays a planes and casts Kendrith's Transformation, enchanting the ranger. This lets him draw a card with its effect, plus he gets to draw again thanks to his general's trigger and gains a life, and then draws another card thanks to his core spirit dancer. This also turns Mark's creature into a 3-3 elk with no abilities. Next, Jimmy casts Shielded by Faith, enchanting his dancer and making it indestructible, and thus he gets to draw two more cards thanks to his general and the dancer, and gains yet another life. Next, he casts Behemoth Sledge. Then he moves into combat and attacks with his general. This triggers his sword, gaining another basic land from his deck into play tapped. Mark then has his Micaias take the hit, who then dies as Jimmy passes. This time Mark keeps no extra cards from his Sylvan library. He plays Thespian Stage and casts Worm Coil Engine. This also lets him draw a card thanks to his Guardian Trigger and passes. Jimmy plays Sungrass Prairie and casts Holy Avenger, followed by Indestructibility, which he enchants his general with. Thanks to his overall triggers, this lets him draw two more cards and gain one life. Next he casts Helm of the Gods and equips it to his general, boosting it for each enchantment he has in play. Then he moves into combat and attacks with his general. Thanks to his Sword of the Animus trigger, he gets another basic land from his deck into play. Mark blocks the hit with his elk, which dies. And then in his second main phase, Jimmy equips his helm to his spirit dancer before passing. Mark keeps no extra cards thanks to his Sylvan library. He plays a forest and casts Seedborn Muse, followed by Shadow Spear, before passing. Via Seedborn Muse's effect, Mark untaps his permanence on Jimmy's turn. Jimmy plays a forest and equips both the Sledge and the Helm to his general. Then, looking to wrap up the game, he casts Valiant Endeavor and rolls two six-sided dice. He ends up rolling a three and then a four. Thus he chooses to destroy all creatures with power three or greater and then to make four two two white knight tokens with vigilance. But Mark makes a move to turn the tide of the game and simply pays one mana to have all of Jimmy's creatures lose hexproof and more importantly indestructible until the end of the turn. As a result, all creatures except Seedborn get nuked. And then Jimmy's four night tokens arrive. And Mark's engine produces two worm tokens from its death trigger. One with death touch and the other with lifelink. Jimmy then equips one of the creatures he has in play with the helm before passing. Mark keeps both extra cards off his Sylvan library, paying eight life. Next he casts Dried of the Elysian Grove, which lets him draw a card via his Guardian Project trigger. Then he plays two forests as his land and his extra land off the Dryad for the turn. Next he casts Vidalkin Aurori 
which gets an instant groan from Jimmy. Mark then equips his Shadow Spear to his Death Touch Worm token and moves into combat and attacks Jimmy with it. Jimmy blocks with two of his 2 2 Knight tokens, and thus all three creatures die as Mark gains four life before passing. Via Seedborn's effect, Mark once again gets to untap all of his permanents on Jimmy's turn. Jimmy starts off by recasting his general, Sithis. Then he plays a planes and equips his sledge to Sithis. Then he casts Croson Grip to blow up the Vidalcan Aurori, which is a pretty sweet play, I gotta admit. Then he equips his knight with his sword of the animist and attacks. With its effect, he gains a little basic land from his deck into play. Mark has his dryad block the hit, which dies, and Jimmy passes. But before the end step, Mark pretty much rewinds time here and casts Faith's Reward, which brings back all of Mark's lost permanence this turn, which in this case would be his Dryad and Aurori, which made Jimmy laugh, but made me a bit sad because that play was just evil slash unfair. Like when Vegeta and Goku agreed to fight each other at full power during the Buu Saga. Yes. Full power. <laughs> Anyways, Goku, I mean Mark, draws a card off the project trigger. Then he flashes in exploration. Because he needs more land drops at this point. Hooray! <laughs> and finally, he flashes in smothering tithe. During Mark's turn, he keeps both extra cards off his Sylvan Library, paying 8 life. Then he casts Champion of Lambhold, which lets him draw a card via his Guardian Project trigger. Next he casts one of his favorite creatures in MTG, Uvenwald Hydra. Combined with his Project trigger, he gets to draw a card, and then net a land from his deck into play, which in this case is Mossward Bridge. Mark then uses its effect to hide away a card. Also his champion gets a plus one plus one counter. Next he plays a forest as his first land for the turn and a tapped Field of the Dead as his second. Then, he passes. Via Seedborn's effect, Mark gets to untap his permanence on Jimmy's turn. Jimmy pays two mana to not allow Mark to get a treasure token via the tithe. Then Jimmy plays and sacks Terramorphic Expanse to net a basic land from his deck into play tapped. Next, he equips his Avenger to his General, giving it double strike before passing. Before the end step, however, Mark makes full use of his Vidalcan Aurori to flash in Shalai, Voice of Plenty, which lets him draw a card off his project trigger and place a plus one plus one counter on his champion. Then he uses Shalai's ability to place a plus one plus one counter on all of his creatures. Then as he controls at least four creatures with counters on them, he need only pay two mana to flash in his general, Hamza. This lets him draw another card and place another counter on his champion. For Mark's turn itself, he again keeps both of his extra cards off his Sylvan Library, paying eight life. He plays a Plains as his first land for turn and casts one of my favorites, the Great Henge. He taps it immediately, gaining two life. And since he has six creatures with counters on them, Hamza makes his creatures cost six less to cast. So for two mana only, 
Mark drops Terastodon, which, thanks to the Henge, as well as the Guardian Project, will let him draw two cards when it ETBs. But before that, Jimmy casts Heroic Intervention to make sure that Mark can't target his permanence to be destroyed by Terastodon's effect. The creature then ETBs, hitting Mark two draws, and a plus one plus one counter on it thanks to Hamza, and the champion also gets a counter. Next he casts Toski, Bearer of Secrets. This lets him draw two more cards. Hamza's effect gives Toski a counter, and the champion of Lamhold gets another counter as well. After that he casts Stone Coil Serpent, where X is eight which again lets Mark draw two more cards. The Serpent gets an extra counter thanks to Hamza, and the Champion also gets another counter. Next he uses his Shadow Spear's second effect to basically nullify the effect of Heroic Intervention on Jimmy's creatures so that he can cast Duplicate. This lets Mark draw two more cards. The Duplicate gets a counter, and the Champion gets a counter. Then, thanks to the Duplicate's ETB, he exiles Jimmy's General. Next, he casts Soul Warden. And, well, you get the picture at this point. Draw two more cards, the new creature gets a counter, and the champion gets a counter as well. Next, to flex on Jimmy pretty hard, Mark casts Kozilek, the Butcher of Truth which in total, with all his triggers, gains him one life. He gets to draw six cards from his three triggers. And then Kozilek and the champion each get a plus one, plus one counter. Then he plays both Sun Petal Grove and a forest as his additional lands this turn. And lastly, cast Lightning Greaves which he equips to his Butcher. Then he moves into combat, and it's pretty much academic here. First, thanks to the Annihilator trigger, Jimmy would have to sack four permanents. And because the Champion of Lambhold's power is being so high, Jimmy couldn't even block this turn if he wanted to. So Mark swings out with all his creatures that can attack, and deals lethal damage to Jimmy in a single turn to take the Terminator-style win. Jimmy was in complete control of this match and the tide shifted to a dominant mark win off two cards, Valiant Endeavor and Shadow Spear. Jimmy got too greedy and tried to use the Endeavor to finish the game and completely forgot about Shadow Spear's second effect. The truth is, a lot of people do. They remember how the card has a low CMC and is basically a better Loxodon Warhammer. But that all-important second ability to strip your opponent of those sweet protections of indestructible and hexproof, and the fact that the card doesn't even have to be equipped to do it? Long story short, don't ever sleep on Shadow Spear. Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments down below. Also, if you enjoy our content, consider becoming a patron. We'll give you access to sweet things like entries into our awesome prize tournaments, bonus entries into giveaways, your nickname is part of the EDHCC club, and so much more. Also, if you're looking to grab some custom sleeves or new playmats in the future, please check out yourplaymat.com and use our promo code BT10YP or click the affiliate link in the description below and you'll receive 10% off your order. So not only do you get some nice swag, but you also greatly help out the channel. That's it for this week. Thank you all for watching. It means the world to me. Stay warm, stay safe, and keep on, keep on card gaming. Take care, everyone.